Welcome back, Rankers. If this is your first week back at work, good luck to you. We've all been working for a week, but that's okay. Hopefully you had fun in the surf or the snow or wherever you were in the world. Whilst you're away, Google made 30 changes to the algorithm. Just 30, just quietly. Uh, I'm not going to go through all 30 today, but what I will take you through is what I think are the key things that are coming out of the changes that we're seeing being made. And these are three things or three areas which you really need to focus on as soon as possible, if you haven't already. I know a lot of the people who watch this show actually have uh, because I get the feedback and I see it happening uh, online. First thing, mobile. One of the changes in here was more about mobile search results. This is really, really important. Last year for Christmas, we saw, on average, 200% increase in purchases made by mobile devices across the world. 200%! People sitting there with their mobile phone, I'll buy that. That's incredible. That's an incredible stat. And certainly locally in Australia, I don't think we are seeing a, uh, a reflection of of the urgency or the import of that with our big retailers. It could be wrong, but certainly I'm not seeing it. I go to a lot of the big brand sites uh, on my mobile sometimes, and they're disastrous. They're horrible to navigate on a mobile device. So what do you have to do if you think you your audience is mobile? And one of the ways you can already check this, this to see whether people are already coming to you from uh, a mobile device is head across to Google Analytics and go and have a look at the mobile data in there. I won't show it to you now because uh, we've got a couple of things we have to get through. So, But you can go and have a look at it in Google Analytics, right? See who's coming to you on a mobile device, what networks they're coming to you on, whether it's Vodafone, Optus, Telstra, whatever. Then if your site isn't rendering properly on one of these devices and or if it's really hard to navigate, if it's got you know heaps and heaps of links, on the page and you try to click it and you don't know which link you're clicking because you're like me and you've got fat fingers, you need to fix that. That makes it what we call search engine, uh, sorry, mobile friendly, a mobile friendly re website. That's the minimum if you think your audience is out there using mobile devices trying to connect to your site. If you want to take it to the next level, you've got to optimize it for mobile devices. You've got to make it almost app-like, and there are, if you're using WordPress, and we've done this to a few clients, and if you're using WordPress, it's a lot easier to do than if you're using some convoluted uh, roll-your-own content management system, but certainly most of the major content management systems will have it so that you can make your website mobile optimized. And what you're trying to do in that instance is make it easy for people to make a purchase if that's what you're in, business you're in, if you're in restaurants or, or retail or tourism or something where you want to make it as easy as possible, as frictionless as possible to, for that transaction to take place, make that thing app-like on a mobile device. So I'm talking iPads, the whole, the whole lot. Once you've done that, then you can start to look at the, the, the search results, okay? Because until you get those things right, specifically the making a site search engine friendly, if your site is not search engine friendly, you are not going to turn up in mobile search results. That's the first step in getting found in mobile search results. People have asked me about, you know, .mobi, .mobi, which was the, the domain that was meant to you for mobile websites. It's a load of toss, really. It's, it's not important. Your domain name doesn't import, isn't important when it comes to mobile search. What's important when it comes to mobile search is obviously all the normal things that we talk about with SEO, but, but you will be precluded from all of that if your site isn't mobile friendly. Also, a couple of things you want to look at is make sure that you have your phone number, if you want people to call you, uh, in plain text somewhere on the page. Don't just have it in a graphic or have it in your description tag. The reason for that is, you know, this, certainly in iOS, I, I'm assuming the same as with Google Android and a few of the other others, uh, Google tries to make it easier if it finds the phone number for people to click on that, activate the phone, and make a call directly to the 
the business. If your phone number is only in a graphic on that page, it can't do that. All right. So make sure that the mobile phone is uh, mobile number is sorry, the phone number is there somewhere in plain text on the page or in the code. The next thing that's coming out of these changes that we're seeing is the bigger push towards social signals. And one of the must things, and we said it last year, and we still see a lot of brands haven't done it. And it just astounds me because it's so important. And that is getting involved with Google Plus, specifically going and grabbing your brand page. Now, if it's too hard, we'll do it for you, okay? But go and grab your brand page. You don't have to go and set it up. You don't have to go and put all the bells and whistles on it yet. You don't even have to get involved with Google+. Plus. But it's important because if you don't grab that brand page, you could lose it. Someone else may get it, okay? So remember what it was like when you had to try to get your domain name off someone else and what a pain in the bum that was? Okay. The next thing on from the Google Plus brand page is getting Google authorship set up. And... I'm not going to go into that now because I went into it last June, but I know there's a lot of people that still aren't doing it. But authorship is so important because it is going to be what eventually, in my humble opinion, replaces the old Google page rank. And if you have any articles or content on your site, you need to get Google authorship set up for that. And that integrates back to uh, not only your brand page, but also your own personal Google Plus account, which you should set up as well. Now, for both, of the, for both of those things, the brand page and your Google Plus account, you do need to get a, either a Gmail address or a Google Apps email address, if you know what those things are. If you don't know what, what I'm, hell I'm talking about, just get back to us and we'll help you do it. Now, the reason those things are important is because Google's always trying to get rid of spam out of the Google Index. And one of the ways it's going to be doing that, and we saw it start last year, is look at the value of actual authors, the quality of authors, as opposed to just the content itself. It's going to look at the content and who actually wrote that content, and that's going to be important. So that's why authorship is, at its most base level, is so important, and Google Plus. Certainly get your brand page claimed before someone else does. And the final thing that's coming out, and we see, still see this happen, and driving me mad, is 404. So 404 is basically, and I can't believe this is the first time I'm actually going to a web page, but a 404 is basically a error code that the server sends to the browser and therefore the bots, the, the Google bot and other bots out there. And it says this page does not exist. I can't find it. You've made a request for a web page. Oh, I've gone looking for it. It ain't here. Sorry. That's what a 404 means. What we see time and time again, and what I'm doing here is not shouting, is I'm just putting in a gobbledygook URL at stuartmedia.biz to show you a standard 404 that comes with a WordPress site. And that's what it looks like. And at the same time, it's delivering that page to the user, but it's also sending that code to the Google bot and other bots out there and the browser itself that this page doesn't exist. Can't find it. It's 404. What some web developers do as a technique, I don't get it, but they do it, drives me senseless, is that they will take this gobbledygook URL and just put it at the root of the site. They'll just actually return, and what that does, it actually returns a page that says, oh yeah, here it is, it's this page. And what Google sees, it sees your home page duplicated as many times as people put in the wrong URL. So if there are bad links out there, or if people are prone to maybe spelling a part of your web page or site wrong, then you're going to have multiple duplicate pieces of content. It's going to dilute the rest of your content on your site. And Google's basically, just, it's not going to penalize you. It's just not going to help you. It's going to back off. And one of the changes that we saw uh, in December was still yet another change to the algorithm to try to better detect what they call this soft 404 detection. You don't need to do it. Uh, make it easier on yourself. Eliminate that as a variable for your not ranking. 
get proper 404s. You can go and check, uh, there's plenty of sites like these out there. Uh, one of the ones I use is seoconsultants.com. You can just put a, a web page in, like Stuart Media, and I'll show you what I mean. StuartMedia.biz, and forward slash blah, 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 blah. That's not a real web page, so it should return a 404. This little service comes back and says, hey, that's a 404 not found. And if you see that, then you know you've got proper 404 set up. If you don't see that, and it comes back 200 okay, you've got an issue and you need to fix it. They are the three main areas that you need to focus on if you haven't already, as quickly as you possibly can, because they're becoming really, really important this year. And especially if you're doing business online, if, you, if you're a retailer, if you're transacting online, make sure you get your mobile uh, set up properly because massive this year. And that's it for this week's show. Have a great 2012. I'm going to try to get out to see more of you this year. For those of you not in the country, it's going to be a little bit slower. But when I travel, I'll be telling you where I'm going and hope to catch up with you a bunch of you for coffee. And I'm going to start with the Melburnians because we do the best coffee. See you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.